Hello? Hey? Come on? Come on? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm on. Well, hey there everyone, this is Barry's Best Tiny. I'm Mike and I do bees. Welcome to Southeast Louisiana and welcome here inside my little shed where I'm going to work on rendering some wax today. So today is the 7th of September and rendering wax is going to be the last thing in the whole production part of my season. We produced bees, we produced nukes to sell, we produced our own queens, a third I bought sells, the two thirds I produced my own. We have produced honey and we produced wax. So the wax has to be melted down, has to be rendered as they say. So that's what we're going to do today, going to show you my way, how I do, not how to. This is not how I do brood wax. Brood wax you can find in previous videos. It's a messy, uh, messy uh, affair, we'll say, out there with the burner and the pot and uh, getting all the cocoons and stuff strained out to where I can get a nice big block of clean wax. So this is brood wax. And this is what I really use, it's nice and clean on the bottom. This is what I really use for my maintenance of my frames and such. This is capping's wax here and back there. And there's some more brood wax in the very back. So this is my Max Ant melting tank. It works well. Uh, the Max Ant comes with these valves right here. I put the elbows and the downspouts on them. It's easier for buckets. You'll notice in my very first video, I did it with, without these and these have helped. Uh, it's just a, simply a tank, it's thin stainless. It's got this here in it. Uh, now what this is, is a wax melter and honey warmer. So there's the element down there. If you want to warm honey, you do it by the bucket. Now if one of our viewers has this and uses it, told me about it. I can't remember, was it Terry maybe up north? Somebody. You put that in there now you can stick a bucket in there submerged in hot boiling water. Okay, so not boiling well you get it up to a boil then you put the bucket in it reduces it and all that good stuff i have not used it for that at all and the other thing i only again use this for capping's wax i don't want the nasty all the comb in here from um brood comb so i take this out i'm gonna fill it up with some hot water again i have a uh water heater with a hose attachment my water heater has a hose hooked to it so i can fill I'll put hot water in this thing and go ahead and get it heating up. And so I'm going to fill the water up to the right level. I'll show you that in a minute. And I'm going to plug it in now. It will, it will say this is not a speedy process. It, it's a good hour, hour and a half process um, each run. But uh, you can run a lot of wax. I'm not going to run a lot today because I don't have that many pans to put it in. But you can run a lot of wax in this thing. Um, I could probably run every bit I got because I did not get that many cappings this year. Because as all you know in our harvest down here in the south, we took a big hit on that freeze and we just didn't harvest that many frames. I did about 50% production. I have about 50% the wax. I got three buckets of wax. That's it. But this is part of wrapping up uh, harvest, wrapping up production. So I have got the tank filled. I'll show you what I got. I've got it heating up. And you turn the controller on this thing all the way up to 250. 120 Celsius, 250. There's hot water in it already, so the line I fill it to. Now, here's the deal. The instructions are different from the video. The video they'll show you on their site says one thing, the, the instructions say the other, but the bottom line is they conflict. So what we have is we have the one says fill it between the two holes, the other one says fill it over the second hole, but oh well. I went with in between. I just fill it to right here. It is hot already, wow. But what I like about this is that I can do everything inside because it's electric. I don't have a burner to deal with. Now something else I did was, there's wheels under there as you can see. That's one of those square moving dollies that you can put furniture on and roll it around. And I put a piece of plywood on it. This makes it where I can roll it around. Now when the season's over, when I'm done with it, I'll get it all clean. I'll take it off there, shove that in underneath the sink there. I'll put the board away, I'll put the dolly away and we'll be done. But this way it's mobile, I can move it around. Um, because once you got it full, it's heavy. I'll be back as soon as this thing is ready to dump wax in. Alright folks, 
I saw steam and it is a rolling boil and that's what it is supposed to be brought up to is a rolling boil so I'm gonna dump oh you can't see so that's a rolling boil there we go so I'm gonna dump the wax in and and uh, get this party started this only thing bad is you gotta watch dumping it gotta go slow and easier it splashes back up on you Last year I put it in totes and I do at least a whole tote and it was a pretty good sized tote. The buckets, uh, I haven't gauged how much I really should put in there but this thing holds a lot. I just don't have a lot of places to put the wax once it's done. It's just a one shot deal. That's what I really like about this. I render it in one shot. And I do have to run a final run to kind of clean the wax out and clean it nice and get any final wax clean but I mean there's no re-rendering of what I pull from this and you'll see a little bucket I could put that five gallon and the two smaller buckets in here no problem I normally would like I said I don't have enough pans and you probably say Mike why didn't you order some pans honestly I forgot totally forgot I meant to have uh, about five of those pans five or six of those pans where I could just dump I can also put it in a bucket don't, don't get me wrong it's no problem but I don't want I want those in the smaller sizes all right folks it's boiling now uh, let me show you what it looks like what we're gonna do at this point so be careful it's hot lots of steam there's our wax is bubbling there's water bubbling up through it and there's a lot of honey that'll that'll float up now i have a confession to make i went ahead and dumped everything in see i washed all the buckets i dumped it all in i've never dumped that much usually i never go above like okay so here's the top at least you never go above like right here this just above this first ring because <clears throat> i don't have a lot of pans i meant to order more and i didn't so we broke out everything we can put wax in <laughs> so there's a lot of wax in here but i'm getting it all done for the season it's done after this done d-u-n done see that water bubbling up that water shoots up through the top so that's what we want to see so what we have to do now and this actually took a while to that's honey all that foam like that a lot of that's honey uh and then you'll see the water you know boil up clear through there so that's what you're seeing so here we go ahead and turn this off all the way and it has to settle now you want it to settle. You want everything to settle out. You want all the wax to float to the top. You want everything else to go to the bottom. Now, there still will be debris in here, um, but I'll show you how I do it to keep the debris out. Because what we're going to do, is we're going to take that bottom valve. We're going to drain that water back down until we get wax coming out of the bottom. Then, everything in the top is pure wax. So we use the top valve to drain off our wax. And I'm going to show you how I do all that. Hang tight, let's let this settle for a little while. It's already, uh, it's already settling out good. So this thing is really one-stop shop and you do it all in one shot. It's really nice, produces beautiful wax. I'll have to show you that tomorrow after, after it uh, cools. We'll take a look at what we got, but I do like this, this wax melter. It really does make it a one-stop deal. Boom, we're done, and I like that. But there's a lot of wax in there. All right, this settled out good. All the wax is on top. Now about five minutes of settling is all I usually do. Now I'm going to drain water until I get the wax. Here we go. So, put this bucket here. And it's kind of tricky to see what is water and what's not. What this will do is it'll allow the water to come, the wax will hit here, and we'll know we have wax at that point. And then everything up here is pure. It'll run through a strainer, and I'll show you that. But it uh it does a really nice job i can't find that but here's the sure ways this hive tool it'll immediately dry I saw that with brad at uh at b-man faith apiary there's actually a little bit of wax in there but nothing significant so just water for now All right, i'll let y'all know when we get to the wax Let's see. Uh, 
We should be seeing wax any minute now. A lot of honey in that water. Oh, there we go. There it comes. All right. We just hit some wax. Yeah, there we go. We got, see how it turns white on there? That's it's wax. I can see it in the top of this. So the color change, it started lumping out, kind of lumpy like. That was that was a sign that we hit just hit the the honey. I mean the uh, wax. So set this to the side. And we're gonna set this to the side. Here's how I do it. So at this point we know our wax and water mixtures right here I'm getting wax dripping out I got a little bit on top so now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna strain it because you will have some mess in here it's not a perfect and I fill it up see how pretty that is clean now but this does get any little floaties out as you know you'll always have some floaties I use this non-stick pan That's gonna be a big old chunk of wax. Probably shouldn't put that much in there. These I'll put some hot water in. The way we um, kind of keep it from sticking as much. It doesn't make for a real pretty smooth bottom of the wax, but it helps nonetheless. All right, let's go with this. We're almost to the end of the top valve. What I'll do is I will tilt it if I have to. And hey folks, you can see this strainer is not full of a lot of junk. So now I drain wax out of the small tube. Now this is going to have a little gunk and water in it, but we're going to run it through the cheesecloth. You'd be surprised, actually, how quick that gets out of there and now we're at pure wax. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this a little bit more and then that's going to be a big enough chunk of wax. And I'm going to put the last of it in this other bucket. So now we just need to let them cool overnight. I'll bring you out here tomorrow, we'll peel them back, and we'll call it a video. It's probably about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more in this batch of wax on top. You can get that if you tilt it and keep pouring it through a strainer and a bucket. But then what you end up doing is forcing a lot of that mess and that, that, that slum into your strainer. And that's, that's no good, because then the small particles do get through. Like this one will have a few small particles, but you can see really when it's all said and done, there is not that is not a lot to strain out compared to when you have to do it, you know, put all your cappings in there. But see, it's starting to come through on the bottom, and that's not what we want. Well, already, folks, same shirt, different day. Oh, and I got a haircut. Anyway, I have come back in. It's the next day. Let's take a look at this wax and see what we're looking at. You can already see one thing I did that got me into a little bit of trouble with just one of these wax uh, blocks. Let's look at it. 
All right, so here's what we got. It's quite the mess in here right now. This is the water we drained off. All right, see, no wax in there. And then we went ahead and drained into this one when that one filled up. And this one here has got a thin coat, real thin. Like it's so thin it breaks. I'll show you how thin it is. So it's, it's like that thin. So what I'll do with this, that's all brown. That brown is honey in there and water. Uh, a lot of the trash is still in, in the tank. This bucket is the one that I pushed it on. I shouldn't have pushed it. That's where I made my mistake. Um, I continued to dump the sludge through the cheesecloth. In other words, I continued, I, I tipped it a little bit and took the last of it out. What I should have done was just let the wax drain out and when it stopped, leave it. And then that creates uh, a piece in here. Well, there's going to be a piece in here no matter what. So I should have just left it. You see, this piece in here is what's always left after each boil. It's got the sludge that's encased in it, but it's so it's a good piece. But what I do is I take this. There's there's the size of it. So my finger. So it's about an inch. And what I do is I scrape all this slum off, like you would any other wax. And I take all this, this wax, and the wax that was in that initial water pour, that little sheet that that when we first detected wax, we stopped draining. I take that, and I take this. I just break it up into pieces, clean it up, break it into pieces, I throw it in a pot with some water, I boil it, run it through cheesecloth, and it's done. And what I'll do is, I don't do that at once. Like if I have several runs, like this year I don't, so I did it all in one shot. I don't have several runs, but like last year I had a lot of cappings, a ton of them. It really wasn't a ton, it wasn't 2,000 pounds of cappings, but it was a lot. And so what I did with those is I actually saved all these. So I saved them all, and all the little sheets like this one, I saved all of it, and I did a final run through this actual tank, and it came out beautiful. So here's all the blocks of wax. Let's take a look and see what we got. So these little pans are nice. I need a bunch of these, because this is what you get. You pull it out, it's got a little bit down at the bottom, but that's beautiful. Same with this, peels right out beautiful wax here's the buckets now to keep that from cracking what I should have done when I didn't do it uh, last year in the buckets what I do is I put a piece of cardboard over this and it, it lets it cool it doesn't cool as fast and that's the, kind of the trick to making sure you don't uh, get your wax all cracked but I don't really care if it breaks off when I pull it it's all gonna get melted down Alright, I got it. <laughs> you got a little bit of mess on the bottom. I got a little debris on this and it came out of my bucket. This bucket, you can see it had debris in it. This debris, all this around here was already in it. I knew that was going to happen with that one, but I wasn't worried about it because I had just decided to put all the wax in the boiler at one time. So on this one, I just have to break it loose off of the side of this little bucket. Every time I use this little bucket, <laughs> kind of a pain but it works I'm gonna buy more of those pans though so I don't run into all this and these they're funny looking because I put water in the bottom and then I pour hot wax in it and it makes this funny stuff you just push it all down so I went out and washed this one off see it came clean there's a little bit of debris left but you know but in the end that's a good take I have to scrape that one and I scrape that one and that'll be it. We'll be done with wax rendering for the year. So all production will be finished minus uh, what I bottle each week. Everything's in buckets, wax is all rendered, hives are all set, off we go. Alright guys, well, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed my little how I do video on wax rendering. That is what I do. That is my process. And with that, this is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. Today, we did wax. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful week, and may God bless you. We'll see y'all later.